put your frames together, obviously you will need a frame which consists of four pieces. You've got your top bar which has a groove on the underside edge and that's to put the foundation in and secure it. Two side pieces that hopefully have got holes in if you're going to use wire and these can come in either three or four holes and that's totally up to you which ones you prefer. I prefer the four holes it just gives you more lengths of wire to secure the foundation and the honeycomb into the frame and then last of all you'll need a bottom bar. These bottom bars like the top bar can come with or without a groove on one side and that if it does have a groove goes to the inside of the frame as well. That's just there so that the bees can build the comb right into that little groove and it helps secure the comb and stops it falling out. You'll need some nails. Um, you'll need some small panel pins with a flat head and that's to secure the wire. And you'll also need some panel pins like these ones. These are about two and a half centimetres long. And you'll notice that the panel pins are very narrow. Although you're using soft pine, you need to make sure that the nails that you use are quite thin. Otherwise you run the risk of splitting the wood when you're nailing it together. Glue is optional. I prefer to put my frames together without glue. I find that they come together with the nails and they stay together, they don't fall apart. So if you want to use glue as an added um, bonus just to make sure they don't come apart, then you can do that. So let's get this frame together. So we'll start with our top bar, uh, remembering that that groove goes underneath. We put one side piece on. other side piece. Just needs a gentle tap to get it in there. Oh no, that one's going together. Uh, if you buy good quality frames, they're precision cut and it just means they go together nice and easily without splitting. It just makes it a lot quicker and easier to get them together. So I start by putting a panel pin in on the top. And then another one on the other side. Now because I don't glue my frames, I've found it's really handy to put a panel pin just through the side here. What that does is it stops the frame coming apart. When you go to lever the frame out of the hive, Sometimes if this piece is really stuck down with propolis, you can end up pulling and levering the top bar out and then the rest of the frame stays behind and then you've got a bit of a mess to clean up and a frame that's coming apart. So to prevent that, I put a couple of panel pins just in on the side here. And one on the other side. And that just secures that and there's no way that's going to come apart. And then the last thing you have to do is attach your bottom bar and not forgetting if you do buy frames with the groove in the bottom it needs to go on the inside. So that should go together quite easily and I just secure that with one nail either end. one that end, preferably not a bent nail. And I don't worry about securing these bottom pieces with a side nail because when you're levering the frame out all of the pressure is going to be on this top bar and the bottom bar tends to just follow and I've never had a bottom bar come apart 
uh, but you can secure it with more nails and glue is optional, totally up to you whether you want to use glue on your frames. The next step is to embed the wire um, into the frame so that we can attach the wax foundation. So for that we need these small nails that have got a flat head and the reason why we need this slightly flattened head is to secure the wire underneath to stop the wire pulling off. So you need two of those and depending on how many holes you've got will determine where you put the nails. So you start by putting one just here on the side. Nail it about three quarters of the way in and just leave a slight gap there so that you can secure the wire. And because my wire is going to run from here back around and back and I've got four holes I need to secure the bottom of that wire on the same frame. So I'm going to put another nail down here. Again leave a bit of a gap because we need to attach the wire. Now if my frame only had three holes then I would put my top nail here and my bottom nail would be on this side down here. So getting the wire in. Go to a bee supply place and buy some nice thin narrow stainless steel wire and that's what you're going to put in your frame. So I tend to do this just by hand so it can be a slow tedious process. Some people make up a bit of a jig which they put the frame in and it has rollers on either side so that you can easily run and pull the wire and it just runs around the rollers makes the job a bit quicker but I'm doing it the slow way. So start by running your wire through because you're going to do this all in one go with one piece of wire. And back again. You need to be careful that you don't kink the wire because when you tension it, you don't want it to break. So keep everything straight without kinks. And then it's just a case of feeding it through. Okay, give yourself a little bit of an overhang here so that you can now attach this end to this nail. So this is where you need some side cutter pliers and this will do the job right through to the end. So grab your wire and wrap it around a few times that bottom nail and then secure that nail back down to the wood. Okay, I tend to just cut off that last little bit of overhang wire because it can be a bit of a trap and you can pinch um, through the glove and get a bit of a splinter in your finger. So now that that is secure we can start tensioning the wire back through to the top nail. You want the wire nice and tight almost to the point where you can pluck it like a guitar and get a tune out of it. So the way I do that is to Grab the wire with the pliers without bending the wire and pull it and bend it around and hold it. If you pull on the wire too tightly you will snap it so there is some give in this wire. You can feel it stretching when you pull it and after a little while you'll get a feel for the wire and you'll know just how much tension to put on it without snapping the wire. So a pull on the wire and then Hold it with your hand, run that around, grab the wire from there, give it a pull, tighten it, bend it, slide that along, give it a bend, it'll help secure it. Again, this end, grab the wire with the pliers, pull it tight, Bend it sideways, secure it with your thumb, 
pull that one through to the last one. And then from here, last pull on the wire. Bend it up, secure it with your finger. Cut that off. And then grab that wire. Wrap it around a few times. Secure it with the nail. Cut off the extra. Just push that little bit down, otherwise that tends to go through the glove and spike you in the finger. And there's your frame. So you can see the tension there. Now some people put copper eyelets in these holes and sometimes frames come with them already in there. I've tried frames with eyelets and without. And while the idea of the copper eyelets is to stop the wire cutting in to the wood and becoming loose, I've actually found that the frame actually stays quite tight. The wire stays tight with or without the brass eyelet, so I tend to just not worry about them. I find it a little bit fiddly and more time consuming putting eyelets in, but again, that's totally optional. So the frames together, we've got the wire in and now we're ready to embed the wax foundation. So we've got our frame here ready to go and we've got our sheet of wax foundation. What you need to do is start by getting that wax foundation into that groove. So that should just slot straight in and ideally, if that foundation sheet is the right size, it should be sitting just neatly inside the entire frame. Now this one's not quite the right size, it's slightly oversized, uh, mainly because this sheet of foundations, most probably for a frame that has a groove in the bottom, but because these frames don't have a groove, it's slightly too big so what I'm going to do is to stop the foundation from warping I'm just going to cut a little slither off the bottom because the foundation needs to sit nice and flat if you force it so that it's got wobbles in it um, when the bees build the comb it's not going to be straight so now I can put that piece of foundation in, get it into that groove and push it right home there. The foundation needs to sit all on one side of the wire like this and you can see there's a slight gap and that's perfect. That's how we want the foundation to sit. And now all we have to do now is embed that foundation onto the wire. So that's the next step. So for that, you just need to get out your iron and your ironing board. Now, to embed the wax onto the wire, I've just got my ironing board. I've put an old towel on it just to protect the cover, just so that I don't drop any wax on it. Um, so when I'm ironing my clothes next, I don't get waxy spots on them. Obviously, I need my iron. Now, an important thing when you're using the iron, it doesn't really matter what heat setting you have. Um, I tend to have it right up to max. But the most important thing is that you turn the steam function off. You don't want the steam getting on the wax because it will damage it. Uh, all you need is the heat. So once the iron is hot, you're ready to go. Now the other thing you'll need is a bit of a board. It needs to be slightly smaller than the size of the frame because you need the board to sit neatly inside the frame so that it can push the wax down onto the wire. This one was made and I purchased this from a bee supply place, but you can just as easily make one of these yourselves. Or in the past, I've actually used an old wooden chopping board from the kitchen, which was about the same size. So put your board down underneath. Make sure your wax is sitting nicely in that top bar groove all the way in. And then you're going to lay that down 
on top of the board with the wire on the top. And you start at one end uh, and push it down and that way you can see that the wire is being pushed down nice and neatly and tightly onto the foundation. Now embedding it with an iron takes a little bit of practice but once you get the hang of it it's quite quick and easy. So I use the tip of the iron and you might see that I've actually worn some little grooves in the top of my iron which doesn't affect the iron for ironing clothes but if you're a bit particular about your clothes then you can always purchase a, a cheaper iron that doesn't have a steam function and that way you can use that iron for embedding your foundation and save your good iron for your clothes. So what you need to do is get the tip of the iron on the wire and you run the iron down the wire very quickly. You don't need a lot of heat and so I just use my elbow and my arm to push the wire down. Start at the end and literally just run and it's that quick. Next wire, run it down and again and the last one there and then very gently I lift that off, turn it around and then all I have to do is just this other side like that, there's two, there's three and there's four. It's as simple as that and then when you lift it off, voila, your foundation is totally secured uh, to the wire. So there's a frame all put together and ready to go.